Honestly, I tell you, I didn't know what is a faggot. I don't know. I didn't know what is a gay. The first time I came out to my mother first is that I'm gay. Yeah, you'll get settled and sunny law ya na na ghar pe. This is what he said. Oh wow. Opening to my parents made me more free. Mm. That you know now I am free and I can you know mm. bring my creative ideas and things and thinking outside because my parents have accepted me. I don't care about the rest of the you world. Feel free. Feel free now. That I have met so many straight men. They are not come out at one point. There are so many bisexual men. They are not. They are confused. Straight men are confused of what their sexuality is. The so dressing sense doesn't assume your sexual orientation. True. Straight man sits with gay. You become gay. Yeah. This is something. I'm like, what is happening? Hello, everyone. My name is Pranav, and I'm your host at the Gut Feel Show. This is a podcast on mental well-being where we invite guests from all walks of life and we discuss different aspects of well-being and their story of transformation. Our today's guest is Mr. Shiv Sharma and he identifies himself as a gay. There is a lot of understanding about how to understand your sexuality and how he faced different traumas in early age of his life where people did not understand his story or his understanding of sexuality and it took him time to convince his parents but they were very very welcoming and open to it so he is very blessed but he has a very good take on fluidity and sexuality please keep watching till the end and subscribe us for more such interesting content hello and welcome to the gut feel show shiv how are you doing very well pranav thank you for having me here It is my pleasure, and, and I'm very happy that I'm here to, you know, talk about uh, and share my uh, things and talks of what has been in happening in my life, and you know, sharing the world of, yeah. about yeah. the topic we are going to discuss today. We would like to know more about it, so yes. let's start with your journey. Also, let's get to the childhood journey where yes. you were you were the a young child artist. Yes. Tell me about that. So um, this was when I was five years old. So I started, uh, you know, I went for a screen test uh, for a shoot for for modeling in. Uh, I was born in Chennai. Okay. So that's where I start with. So I, bo- I was born in Chennai, and uh, so I studied in Saint Michael's Academy School. <clears throat> so there you had a lot of opportunities, you know, modeling करने के लिए या you know go for ramp walks and stuff. So they used to. Uh, experience and explore the small kids and children to you know go for it. So I just gave it a try, and when I got the opportunity, and then they saw me and uh, I got the first lead on the ramp walk oh, for the nice. India Couture of the Kids Edition. Okay. Yeah. So I got in, and the Man- Mani Ratnam, the legend Mani Ratnam, he was the judge for it. Wow. And when he saw me, and uh, he made me the uh <laughs> child artist wow. the title wow. in 2003 yes 2003 i became the child How artist how old were you i was 6 6 i was that age and then after that i got a lot of opportunities for doing ramp walks i did a ramp walk with the mr dino moria oh, wow. as well i was a show stopper with him wow and uh, it was another another great opportunity and um, after that i did about 32 advertisements where most of them didn't know now i'm just sharing it out uh like hamam soap nipo paints asian oh, wow. paints um you know it was a great journey since then so 2003 to 2005 2005 i got the opportunity to come on big screen in a tamil movie called chellame oh. so with actor vishal and the actress reema sen all oh, very yeah. young and a lot of exposure <laughs> yes. at that age then um i got a part to be vishal's nephew in that movie which is one of the biggest uh opportunities ever and it, the movie was super hit in that year after that then i got opportunity to work with mohan lal for a taste buds advertisement that led me to work with him in in a movie in malayalam but you know peer pressure and uh, coming you know studies came along and then i had to <laughs> early early 2000s uh, yeah and the industrial era education was like the only yeah my mom and dad my, uh, both were the you know they were like uh, it's you're too young for doing this career maybe you should you know because also i think the parents <laughs> think that their teenage will come in right. the mind fluctuates right. a lot of things happen so right. they, the fear sets in but 
uh, I agree the peer pressure at times stops us from exploring creative right. sides of us. Right. Uh, a lot of time we are confined to that closed mindset. Right. That study and get a job. Right. That is it. Hmm. So uh, then uh, acting and then also you are a chef. Yes. So how, what so, is the transition? Uh, when I was age around eight, nine, you know, I used to be with my mom in kitchen, help her around be with the food, you know, experiment with the Maggie or whatever it is, do some things. And my mother always used to believe in me that I'll be a good cook when I'm here. And that's what I am <laughs> when I'm grown up. Okay. But, you know, things changed in a bit because uh, initial stages, my parents were not that much in into culinary arts or cooking or baking because, you know, they felt that, you know, doctorate or engineering, that most of the parents yeah, yeah, feel that. Normal. You know, when you three come. Three life. Exactly. So when, uh, so I finished my BBA. So I has uh, pursued my BBA in Kriya, Christo Jainthi College in Bangalore, which is under Christ University. That was 2014-17. And then instead of going to MBA, I felt like I should pursue my career in culinary arts. Okay. And that time my parents like, you know, because the industry is booming. Moment, in this. Yeah. So 2017, I went to Manipal. So I'm a graduate from Manipal, welcome okay. group. Okay. Um, there I finished my culinary arts. And then my focus was on Italian cuisine. Oh. <laughs> but my things changed into being a pastry chef. Because oh. I'm more into, you know, sweets and this and all the, you know, uh, items and mac macaroons and cakes. Oh. I was like, okay, let me go for it. <clears throat> things came in uh, so my dad agreed for it let's go let's do it then uh, I was a COVID batch unfortunately okay. <laughs> to be graduated okay. COVID hit then I came to Chennai back you know because it was a lockdown let me start my own thing for a bit and then I started my own pastry uh, small from home oh. I started my own pastry business where it was a huge hit it was a boom in it was a booming yeah you know, brownies, I innovated different kinds of brownies like, you know, almond and rose uh, with masala chai. Oh. With uh, So that was a unique selling point, which led me to come on Ritz magazine, which was in South Premier, uh, one of the biggest magazines since then, by the food critics and all. Um, after that, uh, then I started with the macaroons and everything. Then I thought, OK, fine, I wanted to move to abroad, of course. Uh, going to Paris, but they needed a professional kitchen experience. <clears throat> That's why I came to the Obroy. Obroy. And then I worked for two years. Uh, they gave me an opportunity to be the guest relation. Obroy, Gurdaw? No, no, Delhi. Delhi. So I was into the pastry team and uh, I was known as the macaron king over there. Oh. Yeah, because I make the best macaron. Wow. <laughs> and uh, also, they gave me an opportunity to be the guest relation executive. Because I was good with the yeah, guests as well. I can, I can see that. And <laughs> interacting with the guests, knowing about the food, knowledge and everything that gained me. Now, what I am into is that, you know, coming back to the acting industry. That's what my perspective is now. Because I have that talent and the way of my personality is. So that is my urge to yeah. be back. So what are you are trying out uh, acting and modeling yeah. careers? So my casting director also has a contact with me, you know, they're going to give me the opportunities. So I'm just waiting for it. So that's my career goal Great. of what. Great. <laughs> Great. Shiv, now let's uh, try to get to tell me more about when you started figuring out about yeah. or understanding about your sexuality. Yeah. Try to tell me about that and how uh was the atmosphere back then how was the society yeah. behaving to it tell me more so when my schooling um days it was a tough times you know you won't imagine it's uh been really difficult at times because uh, the in that years my own my schoolmates or classmates or teachers used to you know because the way I talk because I have a very feminine voice or something or they used to make fun of you know because because I didn't know these words honestly I tell you I didn't know what is a faggot I don't know I didn't know what is a gay what is at that time you know yeah, you're so young lack of so I didn't know all these words <laughs> at all and how these kids knew who are my age they all used to call me these words which I never used to understand 
where I go back to home and then ask my parents or my mom or anyone, like, what are these, what does this mean? Like, if I'm just going out with the guy out or, you know, for tuition classes or going in the same auto or van, they used to make fun out of it, you know, something is going on, is it? But me as a person, I was very naive that I didn't know these kind of things. I didn't understand what really is, what doesn't matter, you know, yeah, in those yeah. stages. <clears throat> but initially, during uh, when I came to, when I finished my schooling, then I came to my college, when I came to Manipal, then I started experimenting myself that I'm not attracted to women. It's an honest thing. So that time I started exploring and there are so many of my community as well, which, you know, in Bangalore back then, in 2014, they didn't have these groups of communities, yeah. people. Manipal had. One of them, my good friend, Trinetra, so she was in Manipal back then. So, you know, talking to her made me feel free that, you know, she made me understand that how this community is actually. Mm-hmm. And then the first time I came out to my mother first is that I'm gay in 20, uh, 2017. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, 2017, yes. I came out to her and she was like, so what? It's your after wow. your son. Wow. And then, so my I didn't tell my father because I was very scared yeah, at that time. Yeah. You know, and uh, this was recent. I think 2021, I came out to him. And how was it? <laughs> he was like, you'll get settled and son-in-law will come to your house. This is what he said. Oh, wow. A big thing so which were, gave me a happy big year. support. Yeah. So, you know, they are very modern in this generation and entire family is also modern. There's his family, his father's side, uh, my father's side, my mom, mother's side, all, everyone are, you know, very supportive in all this. They're which very is, progressive and. Uh, exactly. I, I which I'm very happy about. Blessed, blessed about. Yeah. This. I'm very blessed about it because it's very difficult in the society till date, you know. People are not still coming out. I can only imagine the trauma and the bubble people are carrying in this yeah. space because it is so difficult to speak. Yeah. It's so difficult to express. Yeah. You don't find you are bound by walls. Yeah. I am sure before you spoke to your father, before you spoke to your mother, it must have been difficult it to was take very the difficult. step. You know, to take the step out. Yeah. <clears throat> it was, you know, and it is a big relief. Yeah. You're I just that exhaling. Bubble, that bubble goes fizz. You're inhaling when you're talking about it and you're exhaling once you're done with the conversation. That is why they say that talking and listening, a good listener can always yeah. help a person yeah. in pain. Right. But this topic being uh, sensitive and parents being a prime member of the family, right. you have to tell them to settle down your emotions. Right. Otherwise, it will always be an unsettled emotion. Right. Otherwise, you'll always run around beating the bush and uh, maybe wearing masks in front of parents yeah. and then uh, behaving... Yeah. Uh, indifferent so that they don't get it yeah. but that is a difficult life yeah. it's very difficult at times because you know uh, some of the parents is very they force you to get married mm-hmm. to who the person you don't love yeah. or you don't appreciate because or you don't respect societal pressure societal pressure <clears throat> Which, Even i've heard stories where parents say uh, we don't care you marry as per our uh, wish and then do whatever you want. Exactly. There are situations yes. like this because they don't want the blame. Yeah. They want uh, their responsibility to go off in a societal manner right. and then escape it later. Right. This is a very bad way to do it. it you are just uh, doing damage yeah. to your kid in this yeah. process. Shiva, I would also like to trace it back to your childhood. Yeah. When you were experiencing this bullying phase yeah. of your life, that would have been really difficult because uh, oh, yes, of your that caused my then. mental health. Yeah. So how was it back then, and what was your age, and what were you okay. going through? So I'll tell you an example. Um, you know, it's workplace. My colleague, you know, they just had a random conversation. Asked me that uh, in this age, do you get depression? Age, I'm. They are talking about age of 17, 18. I'm like, depression comes in no age. Yeah. I told him this, and he started laughing. You know. I told this is not the way to make fun of it because I was six and I got depression at that time because it was it was hard feel it because impact I don't know the the atmosphere the environment was such how the parents also 
are you know telling things to their children what are they saying They're trying to manipulate exactly what you know Maybe brings it up naive, parents yeah. saying manipulation will help exactly this. what brings it up and you know it's been difficult at times and other thing is that uh, uh, of course my parents are divorced so okay. so both of them you know they live separately so that also was another yeah. thing to me you know the children all were my dad's colleagues and all in the same company so most of them because of that we brought in a lot of things but that was a past phase <clears throat> but school days were not that great i would say because of the environment i and lived how, in and how and did you see any support from the school or back then it was just a neglected topic no <laughs> <laughs> neglected topic it was just something you know ye to hota hi rehta hai like bachche hain bachche hain ho jata hai even we spoke hai. to the parents also अभी क्या कर सकते हैं बच्चे हैं बच्चे को छोड़ बच्चे के ऊपर छोड़ दो दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स इट्स बट इन दिस द पर्सन हु इज द विक्टिम या ऑफ द बुलिंग सफर्स अ लॉट इन दिस प्रोसेस राइट एंड आई एम ग्लैड दैट यू कुड ग्लाइड आउट ऑफ इट ओह यस ऑफ कोर्स प्रीटी वेल आई डू अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड यू हैड अ गुड एनवायरनमेंट एट होम या but i am sure इवन विदाउट द सिचुएशन ऑफ कंफ्यूजन विद सेक्सुअलिटी एट दैट एज A lot of bullying is happening, and a lot of kids are falling into trap of depression, Absolutely. anxiety, Absolutely. and even drugs. Yeah. Very early age Absolutely. drugs are being introduced. Agreeable. With kids, and what happens is, because in trauma, in bullying, your mind goes into hyperactive mode. Yeah. It keeps on thinking all the yeah. time. You find difficulty sleeping. You find difficulty focusing. You're focusing so you... on your studies and everything. Luckily, you know, I was not in that stage of you know I would. rather study on my you st- go on studies or if it's exams i would concentrate but it's difficult yeah. at times because that is where also kids fall into trap of numbing their mind with yeah. alcohol and drugs yeah so that the mind stops panicking yeah. and those type of age even they start with smoking and all yeah. which is you know because of stress and other things as well stress plus it is mostly <coughs> stopping the mind we exactly. are unconsciously doing this thing to yeah. control the hyperactive mind exactly so hyperactive mind is there is a reason for it mm-hmm. and in your case maybe it was the bullying that was happening so also tell me about the uh, the, the journey of this thing did did you seek therapy for it did you seek any counseling or someone in this process was helping you to understand because these communities started coming in very late yeah while you uh, were in your teens probably yeah. so how did you manage all of that were you so, did you had more friends or how how, how did i uh, in my initial stages now i call myself a socialized person now because i talk a lot i am an extrovert before i was a complete introvert person and, and how did this change that change i think during college days when i came yeah. to bangalore and manipal and Maybe meeting a lot of new people community. the community that's what it opened me and opening to my parents made me more free mm. that you know now i am free and i can you know bring my creative ideas and things and thinking outside because my parents have accepted me i don't care about the rest of the you world feel free feel free now <clears throat> and being extrovert did help you uh, get more confident exactly no that's what obroy also when i was a guest relations you know talking to the guests lot of people from parts of the world they used to come and speak with me talk to me you know i feel good i make friends with them and uh share their knowledge i share my knowledge to them it's it's been lovely at mm-hmm. one moment and uh, attending various events going for uh, the fashion week or a travel leisure event meeting again new people there so i think delhi again has you know made me grow grow and yeah. i think hospitality in general has a very good atmosphere oh yes to all types yeah of behavior all types of all size and shape of yeah. people it is very very welcoming so yeah. i think you went into the right spot yeah. to also gain more and more confidence right. because other corporates yeah. places it's the hospital <laughs> because they are very focused on the right. goals and are also ruthless right at times so they don't care about emotions right hospitality by fundamentals is all about emotions right. how do you feel you have to make the other person feel good right and you can do that when you are feeling good right. so it's a very good spot and yeah. maybe a good recommendation also right. that people who are exploring something uh, in their uh, about their sexuality can right. explore maybe part time hospitality career also right. 
because that give can give them a boost in confidence right. and then they can do maybe anything like you're now exploring acting also so maybe that was a good booster for you it was a good you. thing that you know i've got a opportunity back yeah. again yeah. so it's a good you know it's i believe in destiny yeah. which is a thing which happened now so yeah, yeah. and uh, do you think the labeling of sexuality is a stereotype or how how do you think about it how, what is it? what do you if think you about labeling see, if i say upon my workplace or whatever it is so it's a general uh, conversation ki log assume karte hain ki aap pastry man is going to a pastry chef being a pastry chef wo to ladkiyon ka kaam hai which is not true yeah true not at all true. because you know 92% of men are the pastry chefs around the world and even i believe the best of chefs ever who have been have been male chefs exactly sare khan sa mein raja maharaja ke time mein sab ladke hote because they think that bakery is just you know you are under an air condition mm-hmm. you are just doing some pastry work you're just doing this but it's everything specific it's very elegant you it's not like food you know pastry is an art art Art. which you have to create it is an art form yeah and only very few has the knack on in their hands true if i am very good at macarons others cannot be that means i am very good at macarons because my hands are built for macarons yeah. some of them are meant to for cakes some are meant for cookies some of you know it's different very yeah, different people who have different styles and yeah. different their hands are set yeah. on different dishes yeah a lot of the people are specific specifically seafood chefs there yes. are some who are only into italian yes. some only into yes. pastries like mm. you so it is very very specific yes. i think and it because it is an art form it is very different to every person so True. i i think that uh, stereotyping is something which we all fall into trap yeah. of like a lot of careers are stereotyped a lot of lifestyles are stereotyped yeah. so i think that is where i think things are still lacking but yes. do you think india is progressing on this it front? is progressing i am happy to see that it's progressing i am only thing is you know if leaving apart what supreme court has decided about the you know the marriage certificate whatever it is that will take time it's i'm not um, you know denying on that but now the safety that progressive uh, thing has come up yeah. so i'm really happy about it's nothing to do with but still some people you know they have their old thinking their old thing you know this is not going to happen or how you have you know brought yourself or they blame the parents to it that you know shiv ne aise nahi kiya because your mother is this mm. because i've been with my mother for 18 years uh, so people, they blame my mother for it <laughs> which they, is actually not true people find it like that yeah. people find excuses exactly people find these ways to prove a thing because they are not yeah uh, are, it's just thing with what it is yeah they want to find the blame game exactly they <laughs> want to blame someone true for the uh, something to prove yeah i think that is where we all fall into these traps of blame gaming yeah. is koi blame kar lo uh, jo bhi hai <laughs> so there was also this uh, makeup artist shiv uh, pranshu yes. who committed a suicide yes. what do you think about that you know when i saw the post is obviously it was very devastating yeah. when you see because he was such a talented soul He was a very uh, creative person on his uh, the looks and the creativity on his makeup, whatever he used to put. But he was just sixteen year old kid. He just, you know, got carried away with the messages, the comments of what people were giving. Because I understand it's very again depression and this mental health comes in role here. Because he's very young. Firstly, secondly, he couldn't take it. how it he couldn't process he couldn't that. process you know and maybe not in that state of mind that who he will talk to because at that moment he had to you know give that thing to speak to someone about maybe therapy or maybe therapy or maybe his own uh, parents network of oh, yeah. friends who are yes who are in this community who can you know yes so it's you know it's it just a uh, really sad yes. but do you think therapy can help people who are maybe struggling with sudden bullying or maybe heavy uh, judgment or uh, some kind of bad situation in life sometimes i would say no no you know i would you know not recommend therapy at time because you know you have to overcome yourself yeah. at times that's what i did 
this is my my perspective you should have one friend of yours that you can share anything to yeah. friendship matters you have a lot of friends okay but your one friend who is very true to you mm. that person will be carry forward for you i have my own best friend from school it's been 24 years we are there and i share everything to him because we have that bond for last 20 years i think uh, it is also in today's time today's age you have to be very lucky to have such long friendships i know But that's like, what uh, uh, like uh, people i have seen a lot of people mm. have a lot of fear about friends now absolutely because they have been betrayed they have been uh, backstabbed it's, it's similar because i've been with a lot of short term friends who have you know left me who have betrayed me because of coming out was a scenario or you know uh, he's heterosexual or you know maybe i'll do something and some so you know it's the same it's it's what uh, my Community friends told me one thing, or Sri Nethra told me one thing. Don't accept one thing, Shiv, in your life to pursue fire. Don't accept any friendship, or your if your close ones leave you at that moment, if you come on, don't feel sad. Just move on. Mm. That's what she told me this. And today I am that one friend of mine. He's always been there for me. I, you know, whatever it is. If I'm upset, if I'm, you know, if I'm happy, I'll share with. I think that is a very good coping mechanism and an ideal coping mechanism. Oh yes, it of is course. an ideal one. But in today's time, I believe why therapy is being looked at is because mm. a lot of people have lost trust and faith in their yes. own network. Yeah, and that is something which is on the rise. Right. You have to definitely like I cannot um, um, agree to this more that if you have a good friend, you are blessed. Yeah. You are lucky. Yeah. If you have someone yeah. who is neutral to you, yeah. who is not uh, selfish to you, who is not judgmental yeah. to you, you are very, very lucky, right. and you don't need therapy ever right. because you are blessed to have an ecosystem where you can filter things out without judgment. Right. But otherwise, I think people are finding a lot of difficulty today. A lot of suicides are happening all over the world. A lot of uh, instability in the emotions are around. So maybe fundamentally some things are definitely wrong. That is what I was talking to the previous guest about the education system. That we definitely need emotional intelligence in the education system, rather than rather than just having an IQ based education yeah. system that is designed to create jobs. You need to process right. and understand your emotions very right. early in life. Right. I think that is where you can at least yes. develop more awareness. and better uh, surroundings and awareness of who mm-hmm. your friend can be who cannot be your friend right. and also understanding that why are they not your yes. friends that is okay live with it yeah. that is fine right shiv i believe in the concept of fluidity and i feel every person if they are balanced and also spiritual they have an equal side of feminism and yes. masculinity in them it is just that over time with ego and with a lot of, with a lot of uh, um things that we see the things that manipulate us the brands that manipulate us we become some of them are becoming male chauvinist some of them with their ego are becoming too aggressive in life some of them are becoming too coward and too timid but ideally <coughs> as they say in yoga also life is about balance being in being balanced yeah. so i feel fluidity is something which should be even taught in school and which is an important thing for us to understand how are people Right. behaving like right. they we all have those sides uh, do you agree to that right absolutely um i would say it depends on uh, it rep- prefers on person to person you know if uh, gender fluidity is a vast topic yeah it's not just you know you are people just call you you are a fluid person you are a gender fluid person you are gay means you are gay but no a gay person there are gay persons who are masculine as well mm, yeah there are gay person who is feminine who is me I'm a gay person, but my nature is feminine, hmm. more femininity, more on a women's side, yeah, or you know, yeah, yeah, the nature-wise and everything. But I've met so many men, who, who gay men, who are masculine as masculine, well. Masculine, yeah. You know, so that's that's how they pursue men. Secondly, I would say, when, for example, uh, what is it, gender fluidity plays a vital role. my when i was in childhood my toys were barbie dolls okay okay that was my toys i used to play but in that age i didn't realize when i grow up that i'll be attracted to men mm-hmm. or i wanted to be a trans woman or whatever it is but you know just my i used to be attracted to that pink color, pink color. the purple color that was my attraction till date it is that that colors <laughs> that you know but even heterosexual men which i met my friends 
they also played with Barbie dolls. Mm. But when they grew up, they are hetero as well. They are the same. So it depends of how your nature, you know, brings in. Okay. It's not necessary that you have played with Barbie dolls in your young age. You will definitely be gay yeah. in your older age. It's not true. Yeah. I Maybe I chose that way, you know, that led. And in later stage also, that made me of who I am now. Mm. And I'm proud of yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. So, thirdly, there's a lot of ego in men. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, as you said, cowardness. Yeah. You know, they don't accept of who they really are yeah. at one point. Yeah. Yeah. That I have met so many straight men, they are not come out at one point. There are so many bisexual men, they are not, they are confused. Straight men are confused of what their sexuality is. Are they really gay or they are really bisexual or they are really straight? Because they get attracted to gay men. It's a natural fem you know, formula which happens at times. But um, again, now I'll say example of dressing sense. If a straight man is wearing a rainbow color t uh, sweater or a thing, anything, doesn't mean he is gay. Yeah. It's but even, people even assume five years ago yeah. until uh, maybe Ranveer Singh or some uh, oh, yes. they, like people brought in the pink color and uh, he wore pink color uh, suit. Yeah, so a lot of uh, celebrities have uh, at least made colors more comfortable exactly. now. Otherwise, any guy wearing yeah. pink color in yeah. 2015 yeah. was looked at with yeah. Uh, judgment. Yeah. Now I wrote a post on uh, in Insta about the uh, dressing sense doesn't assume your sexual orientation True. don't make your so what is main thing in this is that you are wearing a, a boated, boated pants or whatever it is that is your way of dressing style now this is my dressing style i love to wear a blazer or a jeans or a pants or anything this is that i want to be classy and sophisticated this is how i am gay doesn't mean that you know upload pink peno purple peno this yeah. you know that is your choice <laughs> I am like this, so it doesn't mean that, you know, I am proving that I am straight, mm -hmm. you know, people assume that, Shiv, you are trying to be straight or what, that you are dressing sense, I am like, why are you judging on my dressing sense and then moving forward, yeah, yeah. so that's one thing, and recently I did a shoot with Miss Isha Tiwari for Kastur, uh -huh. for the gender fluidity Kastur, of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so I did with her, it was a good thing because she contacted me, Ki Shiv, I need you to do a shoot with me for this, Promoting her ethos and it was it flourished that video people loved it wow. at one point wow. <laughs> Because I thought yes, I want to do it I want to spread a word to yeah, people yeah. because fragrance cannot judge you on based If you're using a feminine perfume or you're using a masculine perfume It's just that you should when you're heading out you should feel good yeah. or what you're wearing yeah. You know One of my colleagues asked me you know guma fira ke question poochna Ki, you know, Shiv, isn't it this feminine, very feminine per fragrance for you? She just wanted to know the brand name. She just asked me like this. Yeah, I said, so what <laughs> if it's yeah. this? That is, just I think, also why because in the society, we don't know how to talk about it. Yeah. We don't know how to not be, off, uh, we are scared that it can be offensive. Oh. It, uh, the person might get uh, offend, offended if the way I ask it. So, we ask them because right. the, there is lack of awareness, education exactly. and how you should respond, how exactly. you can talk. So, this fear is yeah. all around. Yeah. 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 They are scared. Yeah. They are scared to not offend you. So, they are thinking good of you. But वो घुमा फिरा के इसलिए पूछते हैं क्योंकि उन्हें डर लग रहा है कुछ हैं जो घुमा फिरा के पूछने की बजाय दे आर इनटू बुलिंग दे आर इनटू द अदर साइड दे आर लाइक बुरा लगने दो जैसा लगना है आई विल स्पीक व्हाट आई वांट एब्सोल्युटली सो दिस वन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट इज कमिंग टू माय माइंड आई हैव हर्ड दिस दैट बैक लाइक अ डेकेड अगो और सो देयर वाज दिस थिंग अराउंड अ स्टिग्मा और अ टैबू वी कैन से दैट कि इट इज कम्युनिकेबल it is if you sit with them if you be with them you'll be like them ye ek this is oh yes this is you know it is a very so it was uh, like, stupid yes, <laughs> yes stupid I thing to, to bring, tell yes 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 ki you know aap log uh, if a straight man sits with gay you'd become gay yeah this is something I'm like what is happening uh, if you're sitting with a lesbian woman you'd become a lesbian that is why it was so stigmatized and tabooed ki uh, the the people were um, sort of um, distancing themselves exactly. from someone they identify yeah. as a person who they don't understand it, back then it was not understanding yeah. awareness mm -hmm. to thi not understanding basically confusion hai. so they will distance themselves because a word around tha 
that you will get it if you be with them. And the other thing which always when I hear from people, we feel scared. That term comes, scared. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, for what? What are we doing? Yeah, it is. It is exactly. There's a lot of fear. Until we don't pursue anything, but we also have our self-respect and we don't, you know, just jump on your, what people think is we jump on them yeah. or whatever, we yeah. just do this and yeah. do that. But no, no, it is not. You know, Actually, that, it is unpredictability because we have grown up in a more predictable manner. So we have grown up with a predictable behavior of a straight male, straight female, how they behave. We have seen that in movies, we have seen that all over the place, so it is, it is feeded in our system. When we see a different thing from what we have seen, we all get scared. We have not been to a jungle forever, we all will be in, in fear. Although you might be an athlete. So I think that fear was causing a lot of stigma, taboo, distancing from this concept, which at least now is uh, recovering, I believe. Right. So I think that is True. improving. So uh, I think overall, there is, as they say, there is uh, light at the end of the tunnel. I yeah. think things are improving and yeah. they will improve. <clears throat> Absolutely. I am uh, glad we had this conversation. Yes. It was amazing talking to you, yes. Shiv. Thank you so much Likewise, for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me over. And thank you. you know, uh, sharing my what I feel and words to your show so it is a great it was my thank, pleasure. thank you thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much thank you so much thank you for watching till the end and please don't forget to comment below and let us know what would you like to hear about next we will invite that guest on the podcast and have the discussions about the mindset and emotional intelligence please do like subscribe and share and thank you again for watching till the end